Open a Bible to the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. We are going through the seven I am statements of Jesus that are found in the Gospel of John. And the reason we're doing that as we start the new year, as well as we might all have dreams and hopes and goals and ambitions for this coming year, one of my hopes and prayers for you as your pastor, is that you would make the goal of simply knowing Jesus better, right? Not just improving spiritually, not just improving our habits or doing things that God commands us to do more, that's that's well and good, but actually just pausing and getting to know who Jesus is better. And throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus uses these statements of I am to reveal to us who he is and who our God is. And it's based off our Old Testament reading in the story of Exodus when Moses meets God on the burning bush and he asks God, who are you? What is your name? How do I tell people that you are? And God's answer is, I am, which is where we get the word Yahweh from. And it simply means to exist, to be. So sometimes you'll see it, I am, or I am who I am, or I will be who I will be, because it's kind of all inclusive of a word. But when we get to the Gospels, Jesus is saying, this is who I am. I'm showing you what kind of God and what kind of Savior I am. And today we're looking at the I am statement of Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. And one of the great themes in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, is this idea of darkness and light. And the reality of life is it's a lot easier to see the darkness that's around us than the light, right? Another way of saying it is it's a lot easier to see and recognize and focus on the brokenness of the world or the bad things in life than it is on the positive and the good things, right? So how many of you have ever had someone give you a positive compliment, a word of encouragement, right? And it felt good, right? More often than not, it didn't stay with you very long, did it? How many of you have ever had someone say something negative to you, whether it's true or false, some kind of negative statement or criticism? And how many of you lost sleep over it, right? Because those tend to what? Stay with us a lot longer. We tend to focus on those negative things a lot more than we do the positive things. And it's the same thing spiritually, that when the Bible is talking about darkness and light, it's a lot easier for us to look around in the world and in our lives and go, I think there's more darkness here than there is light. It's just easier to see the darkness around us. When we are in seminary and they're training us in the practice of preaching, one of the things that they will warn us about as new preachers is that it is a lot easier to preach the law than it is to preach the gospel. Because the law is easier for you to relate to, right? It's easier to look at things that are wrong in the world, mistakes we make, mistakes people have made around us that has caused us harm or someone else harm, and we go, yeah, there's bad news everywhere. So it's just easier for us to relate to and understand and see. And that's our problem as human beings. That's the reality of this existence with sin in our lives and in the world is that there's a lot of darkness. There's a lot of problems in the world. And in the gospel reading in John chapter 9, in verse 2, his disciples asked Jesus a question, which is kind of a question most of us probably have wrestled with or struggled with at some point in our lives. They asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Right? What they're essentially asking is, whose fault it is? What happened? Where did the sin come from that is causing this issue, who do we blame for it, right? Because they were easily able to observe, here is the darkness in the world, here is the problem in the world, this man was born blind. And so they're like, well, let's try to explain it. Where's the darkness come from? Who who sinned? And you may have wrestled with that kind of question before, of like, why is this thing happening to me? What is this, why is this thing going wrong for me? Why is it going wrong for someone I care about, right? We start wondering, like, what caused it? Is there this sin, or did I do something wrong, or did they do something wrong? What's going on? And what I love about Jesus is that one of the things he does throughout the Gospels is people ask him questions, and then he just ignores the questions. 
It's really, really, G- I'm going to start doing that to y'all. You just start asking me questions like, I don't know, I'm going to talk about and just answer something else to really confuse you. But that's what Jesus does, right? They ask him this question, pick a team, Jesus. Was it him? Was it his parents? Someone had to do something wrong for, for this darkness to be here. Whose fault is it? And Jesus says, it was not this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So Jesus kind of doesn't really answer their question. He essentially ignores it and says, your problem and my problem and their problem is not well, who did the sinning? Who should we be blaming for this darkness? Jesus is saying, here's the real problem, is the lack of light. Right? We, we get obsessed, we spend so much time wondering, like, well, and debating, just like they did, well, who, who's at fault here? Where, where did this problem come from? And Jesus is saying, you guys have a much bigger problem. Because if they just, if Jesus has answered their question, right, was it the parents or was it him? the man doesn't end up seeing, right? He, he would still be blind, right? They, the disciples would walk away and go, oh, cool, we got our answer. But what would still be the reality for the man? He'd still be blind. He'd still be living in darkness, right? And so Jesus is trying to reveal to them and to us that we have a much bigger problem than we realize, our problem isn't just, oh, well, sometimes bad things happen, and I got to figure out who to blame. Anybody good at doing that, though? You don't have to raise your hand, but just like, oh, this thing happened, and so now I got to figure out who to blame, whose fault it is. And Jesus is saying, even if you figured out who to blame, whether it was someone else or even yourself, you're still stuck with the problem of darkness, Right? You're still stuck with the problem of sin and brokenness in your life and in the world. And that's what Jesus is teaching the disciples. Like, look, it doesn't matter if it was his parents or him. You're, you're looking at the wrong issue. So the issue is that even if you had the answer to that question, the man would still be living in darkness. He would still be blind. And he's saying, you have a bigger need than you realize. What we need is a cure for the darkness itself. Not just one mistake that we can make up for, right? Not just one thing that we need to make amends for, but Jesus is saying, no, what you need is a cure for all the darkness in your life, all the darkness in the world. What you need is the light of the world. And so one of the things that happens in the Bible is that God describes people who are living in sin, who are living opposed to his will, as living in darkness, as wandering around as blind people, spiritually blind. And so what we do when we ask the questions like the disciples did, we try to figure out who to blame or or whose fault it is, what we're doing is we get stuck wandering around in circles. Right? We just get stuck in the darkness. We just get stuck being spiritually blind, going, I've got to figure out a way to fix this myself. I've got to figure out a way to blame this person. If I could blame it or make it their fault, then okay, I'll be good. And Jesus is trying to make the point that the problem is that the man is blind. The problem is that the man is living in darkness. The problem isn't whether he sinned or his parents sinned. The problem is that there's darkness in our lives that there's darkness in the world. And so just like this man is stuck living in darkness, you and I are stuck living in darkness when we spiritually are blind, when we don't live according to God's will, when we don't obey his commands, when we go our own way. And then we get lost and we wander around and then we do our favorite game, which is whose fault is this, right? (laughs) By the way, you know the last person we always blame is ourselves, right? We're just like, I'm just gonna wander around in the dark, feeling around, going, finding someone else to blame, and the last person I'm gonna think that whose fault it is, is mine. 
And so when Jesus is confronting this question, and he's confronting you and I, what he's saying is, you and I have a bigger problem, right? Even if I figured out whose fault it is for that one thing, guess what my issue is? There's, there's more than one thing, right? Have you guys ever noticed that? You do one thing wrong, and you apologize for it. Anybody ever had to apologize a second time? Or a third? Like a fourth, you're like, my God, like, I just keep on coming up with new ways to hurt people, right? And so that's our problem. It's not just figuring out, like, okay, if this one instance, but saying, oh, no, there's this whole reality of darkness in the world and in my life just like this man who is blind. And so here's what Jesus does. Having said these things, he spit on the ground, made mud with the slime, but then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Right? Jesus does this miracle to reveal something about who he is. Not just that he's a miracle worker, because this is not the only man he heals, but to show us what he has really come to be and to do, that he has come to be the light of the world in our darkness, that our problem isn't just one sin, it's not just one condition, it's not just one mistake, but it's this reality that we are stuck in darkness. There is darkness in the world, there's brokenness and sin and travesty and grief and sorrow in the world, and then it's the same in our own personal lives. What Jesus is revealing is he's saying, I'm the light of the world. I've come to get rid of the darkness. I've come to heal your biggest problem, which is you're stuck in the darkness, that you're spiritually blind. And so just like this man needed Jesus to come and heal him and give him light so he could see clearly, that's what you and I need. Right? You and I, believe it or not, need Jesus to intervene in our lives, to bring his light into the darkness of our sin. Because if he doesn't, all we are going to do is stumble around in the darkness, looking for someone to blame, looking for a way to justify ourselves, and, and falling down and trying to do our own thing, rather than having the light of the world come in and say, here I am to heal you. And in John chapter 8, verse 12, which was the first part of our gospel reading, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is what ultimately Jesus has come to bring for you and me and for the whole world, is that we are all spiritually blind. We are all stumbling around in the darkness with some kind of sin, some kind of struggle, and he's saying, but if you walk with me, I'll give you light, I'll help you see, I'll help you walk in the right path that leads to life. So you and I have a choice, is essentially what Jesus is presenting us with. You and I can, can stay in our stubbornness and kind of walk around lost in the dark going, I'm good, I'm okay on my own, which you would never say, right? How many of you like helping other people? How many of you like being helped? Yeah, right? I met a lot of people in my life who love to serve and to help others. But as soon as they're in need and someone goes, let me help you, they're like, no, 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 no. I've got this, right? And that's what we do when we're stumbling around in the darkness. You're like telling Jesus, don't worry. I'll find the light switch on my own. I'll figure it out on my own. I'll make it better. I'll make it brighter in here. And he's like, you fool. <laughs> don't you realize I'm the light of the world? Like, you don't have to flip a switch. You don't have to make it brighter. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is let me into your life. And I will guide you into the way that leads to life. And you and I get to walk with him every day. And this is a choice that the Bible calls repentance. Repentance. And I can either keep going down my own path and, and the way the Bible talks about it, we either walk in darkness or we walk in light. We either walk with Jesus or we walk away from Jesus. And a lot of times we, we choose the darkness because it's more familiar to us. We get lost, we stumble around. 
But the good news of Jesus and his grace and mercy for you and me, just like the blind man, is that he intervenes and he says, I'm gonna be the light of the world for you. You can come walk with me. You can, you can come out of your sin and your shame and your guilt and you can come into the light where I will give you life. In the epistle reading in 1 John, the way John describes it is that one of the ways you and I walk in darkness is in sin, right? Every time we choose sin, we, we choose to not live according to God's word or his ways. We don't love him the way we should. We don't love others the way that we should. We don't serve them the way that we're called to do. We're living in and walking in darkness. But there's another way that we do it. One of the ways that we live in darkness is by not confessing our sins, right? So how many of you have heard the phrase, well, nobody's perfect, right? That's like our self-defense mechanism when you do something wrong and someone calls you out on it, you know what you say? Eh, no one's perfect, right? Anybody? Has anybody actually done this? Like, I know I've done it, right? And you're just like, I'm gonna defend myself by saying, nobody's perfect. Instead of saying, what? I'm sorry, right? <laughs> it's a lot easier to say, hey, don't judge me, no one's perfect, than it is to tell somebody what? I'm sorry, I was wrong, I made a mistake, right? When John is writing his letter of first John, he's talking about we either walk in the light with Jesus or we walk in the darkness of our sin. One of the ways that the devil traps us in darkness is by convincing us that we don't have any sin to confess. Say, so, oh, just tell him nobody's perfect. Right? I don't have anything to admit that I was wrong. I'm not gonna, right? I've actually had people that I've known who are offended when I said, I forgive you, right? Now, this is how messed up we are as human beings, right? When someone says, I'm sorry, and then the other person responds, I forgive you. They're like, forgive me? I didn't do anything that bad, right? That's the reaction. It's like, even in our midst of trying to admit we're sorry, we're like, I'm sorry, but like, come on, like, I'm a little bit sorry, but I'm not that bad. And I'm not bad enough to need forgiveness. That's what we're saying, right? Sometimes we'll say, I've got nothing to confess. No one's perfect. You know, it's not that big of a deal. And other times we'll go so far as that we'll say sorry. We'll admit we're imperfect. But we're not imperfect enough to need forgiveness. And that is how the devil keeps us trapped, living in darkness thinking, I don't have anything to confess, or I don't have anything that I need forgiven because I'm just not that bad of a person. And the other way I see with people where the devil keeps us trapped and living in darkness rather than the light of Jesus is keeping sins secret because we're so filled with shame or guilt over them. Right? We think, if God knew or if they knew there's no way they would want me or care about me or love me. And so I'm just gonna stay in the dark where no one can see, no one can find out. But you know what John says in First John is that, no, if we actually confess our sins, you know what Jesus' response is to do for you? Is to cleanse you of all sins, to forgive you, and to bring you into all righteousness. Sometimes we stay in the dark because the devil has convinced us to be afraid of the light of Jesus. Oh, he'll find out finally. <laughs> Other people will see. Well, guess what? When you say nobody's perfect, guess what everybody already knows about you? You're not perfect. When you and I go to the cross, guess what we're declaring to the world? I'm not perfect, and I need forgiveness. The cross is God's way of pointing out to everybody, you all need it. You're not perfect. 
And it's also his way of pointing out and showing to you and to me that you don't have to be afraid of the light, that you and I can come out of the darkness because when we come to Jesus and let his light into our life, he says, I'm gonna give you life. I'm gonna give you forgiveness. I'm gonna cleanse you clean from all sins, even the ones that you have kept so well hidden for years. So Jesus is inviting you and me to say, I want that light. I want that life in my darkness. I want my sins forgiven. When he declares, I am the light of the world, it is an invitation for you and I to come out of the darkness of sin and guilt and shame and say, actually, this is where I belong, with him, where there is forgiveness, where I am made clean, and where there is life. Now, here's the other thing that God does with light and darkness. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus, who declares he's the light of the world, looks at the church, looks at you and me and says, and now you are the light of the world. That's a, that's a big statement, right? Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world that brings light into the darkness where there is sin and brokenness and guilt and shame to bring forgiveness and life and light. And then he looks at you and me and he says, and now you are the light of the world. So what do we do with that? Because that sounds like a really big responsibility, right? Because how many of you, show of hands, just participate, humor me for a moment, have darkness in your life? at some level, some kind of brokenness, some kind of hurt, right? And then Jesus looks at you and goes, and now I want you to be the light of the world and go shine forth. You're like, it's kind of dark in here. (laughs) I don't know, Jesus, if I'm the, I mean, I, like, shine and light in the whole world, all I've got is like a little candle. It's probably gonna blow out real soon. What do we do with it? Why does he say that to you and me? How do we be the light of the world? Well, in both of his statements, when Jesus, in chapter eight and chapter nine of John's gospel, saying that he is the light of the world, he talks about this idea of walking with him. And so what are the ways that you and I are the light of the world, that we bring the light of Jesus into the darkness of the world, into the darkness of the lives of the people around us, is by walking with Jesus every day by pointing them to the ultimate light of the world, by reminding them that you don't have to live in darkness, you don't have to stumble around lost and confused and struggling because Jesus is inviting you to his world and to his light and to his life. By reminding people that you are forgiven, that you are loved by Jesus, no matter what your darkness is. So you and I don't have this responsibility of being the light of the world. We just have a responsibility of shining God's light into the world, of pointing others to who Jesus is. Now, I say that because it's really easy when you're in the pulpit (laughs) to sound really brave. Be like, yeah, I want all of you to go to the world and be the light of the world and shine Jesus' light into the whole, all the dark areas of life. But it's hard, right? Because sometimes it's like, what do I do? What do I say? So I want to give you a couple words of encouragement. You and I going into the world to shine the light of Jesus is not as complicated as we think. The first step is to walk with Jesus every day like he invites us to. He says, I want you to walk with me in the light. As John said in his letter that we read in our epistle reading, that we walk in the light with him when we walk in the forgiveness that he gives to us. So that's all it is. How do I walk with Jesus? Well, I just trust in his forgiveness each and every day. And I share that grace and I share that mercy with the people around me. Step number two comes from Galatians chapter six, verse two. Paul, so Paul says in Galatians six, verse two, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And the law of Christ is, in Paul's letters, loving your neighbor. So bear one another's burdens. Because that's what darkness is, right? It's a burden. And sometimes it's sin, but sometimes it's 
despair. Sometimes it's mental health things. It's emotional health things. Sometimes it's physical needs that people have that need to be met that are stressing them out. And so Paul is telling the church, here's how you and I fulfill the love of Christ into the world, how we bring the light of the world, Jesus, to the dark areas in this world. And we bear one another's burdens. So if you have someone in your life that has a need, and you're able to meet that need. That's how you bring God's light into the darkness. That's how you and I shine his light into the world. So step one, trust in the grace of forgiveness of Jesus every day. That's what John tells us to do. Here's how you walk in the light with Jesus. You walk in his forgiveness. Step two, you don't have to go out and be a preacher. You don't have to go out and give some kind of eloquent statement or know all the Bible verses. Paul just says, bear one another's burdens. That there's darkness in the world. People are heavy hearted. People have a lot on their shoulders. And if you in some way are able to meet a need and to lift that burden, Paul says, you're shining the light of Christ into the world. You're bringing his love into their now, one last word of encouragement, because <laughs> if you're like me, that still is like a little much, okay? <laughs> like, okay, that's still a little scary. When God told Moses in our Old Testament reading, I want you to go and bring my good news to the people of Israel and Egypt, Moses' question was, who the heck am I? I'm adding that, it's not in the Hebrew, but it's there, okay? Who the heck am I? to be the one to go to them. Now let's be honest. How many of you have ever sat in a pew at a church service or at a conference or something else and you heard some big rah-rah speech from the preacher about go shine your light in the world and go, who am I (laughs) to be the one to do that? Surely you are talking about somebody else, right? Anybody ever done that? I know I have. I've been to pastor's conferences, and they're like, pastors, go do this. I'm like, I think you mean the other pastor, right? Here was God's response to Moses. I'm I'm with you every step of the way. He says, surely I'm gonna be with you as you go to Egypt, as you go through the wilderness, as you lead these people. And that's the comforting promise for you and me. Jesus says, I want you to walk with me. He doesn't just say like, hey, go figure it out on your own. Right, so when you and I go into the dark areas of the world, when we enter the darkness of people's lives around us to bring his love and to bring his light, the comforting thing is that you and I don't actually go alone. Jesus is with you because you're walking with him. When I was a kid, I grew up hunting and fishing with my dad all the time. And when you go hunting a lot of times, you have to get up crazy early. It's one of my least favorite things about it, which means every morning and every night, you have to wander around in the dark, in the woods. And because my dad didn't want to scare the animals away, we very rarely used flashlights. It was just like, oh, this is creepy and dark and scary. What I realized as a kid, though, is I never felt afraid of being in the woods at night or in the dark. It just didn't bother me at all. And then one time when I was a teenager, my dad was like, okay, you're gonna go off on your own. I was like, okay. And because I was like 15, I was like, I've got this, right? And like, my dad drops me off at one area of the land and then drives off to another area all on his own. And I'm standing there going, all right, I'm terrified now. (laughs) And I started walking and all of a sudden like, Subliminally, I don't know where it came from. I just started, Jesus loves me. I know. I was like, I'm going to die in the woods, but at least Jesus loves me. Right? I was absolutely scared out of my mind. And the more I thought about it, I realized there's a really big difference of just running off on my own, trying to figure it out, and then the times where I was just walking with my dad. Because every time I was walking with my dad, I didn't have to like, be afraid of anything. I was just like, well, I'm just, he's in front of me. I just follow him, and it's all going to work out. But then he was like, all right, buddy, good luck. And I was like, oh, the Lord's going to take me home today. Right? Like, I was just like, right. And it, here's the deal. We're walking into the darkness of the world. This is what Jesus, who is the light of the world, has called you and me to do. 
The good news is he doesn't just drop you off and say, go get him, big guy. Yeah, you got this all on your own, right? And he says, no, you're walking with me. Right? He's in John chapter, he says, I'm the light of the world, but you're gonna walk with me in that light. And first John, he says, I'm the light of the world, but you're gonna walk with me in the light. And so, yeah, it can be scary. You could feel like a little bit like Moses of who the heck am I to bring God's light into the darkness of these people's lives? And the answer is, well, you're a follower of Jesus. You're someone who's been forgiven by him, and you're someone that you're, who's walking with him. And the good news for you and me is each and every day, Jesus is walking with you, and he's guiding you into those conversations, he's guiding you into those opportunities to serve, and the whole time, he's the one leading us. And so our job is to walk in his grace each and every day, realize, hey, I've forgiven, I belong to him. And because he's the one leading me, I don't have to be afraid of the darkness because I've got the light of the world with me. And so I can listen to his command to bring his light into the darkness of people around me by reminding them that they are forgiven and loved by Jesus and by bearing their burdens. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give thanks that you are the light of the world, that you come to shine your light into the darkness of our very own lives and to give us forgiveness and eternal life. May we be faithful followers of you, walking in your light and grace each and every day. And may we shine that light into the darkness of the world around us and the lives of the people that you have placed in front of us so that they may too know your grace and mercy and light and life. In your name we pray, amen.